What's going on doll fans? It is your boy Dylan and I'm back for what should be my final video of the, uh, of the day. Hopefully I would think so. Uh, and it is my preview video for the, uh, let's see, it's a home game for us, if I'm not mistaken. So Miami Dolphins versus Seattle Seahawks uh, tomorrow at Hard Rock Stadium. Uh, so let's go ahead and get right into it because there is a good amount to talk about here. Uh, let's start with the injury report because that is uh, a big deal. So let's see. Um, there was some movement on the Dolphins injury report Friday, including a late addition that could bring about a chance in the, uh, change in the starting lineup. As I had mentioned before uh, in one of my previous videos, rookie guard Solomon Kinley appeared on the injury report for the first time all week and was listed as a limited participant, usually an indication he got hurt during practice. His injury was listed as a foot and he is questionable for the game against the Seattle Seahawks on Sunday. So a couple things to look out for there. One, does he play? Is he suited up? Or is he, you know, on the inactives because his injury is not uh, permitting, right? So uh, we'll see about that. Additionally, um, if he does play, how does he perform? And, you know, can he stay healthy and stay on the field for the entire game? That's important. And then obviously, if he doesn't play, you know, who's going to slate in there? Is Jesse Davis going to kick in? Is it going to be Robert Hunt? Who is it? Uh, you know, there's Michael Dieter, there's Julian Davenport, those guys, uh, out of all of those guys, they could have multiple different possible arrangements for the right guard and right tackle. So it will be interesting to see how that all plays out. And it certainly could affect, um, I mean, obviously could affect uh, how well the uh, offensive line and uh, therefore the Dolphins offense plays. They have been playing quite well um, the first few weeks of the game. Even though there have been, uh, you know, some contextual uh, factors that I believe, uh, you know, have um, boosted that a bit more than what they're actually capable of. Um, you know, obviously being like, for example, against the Bills, not having Matt Milano and Tremaine Edmonds allowed us to attack the field, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so, you know, we'll have to see. I mean, this is going to be a major test. I have been impressed with their offense, but I, uh, with, with the offense so far, uh, it's, and when I say impressed, I just simply mean it's, it's definitely an improvement, um, from what we've seen. There are other factors that make me kind of, you know, be cautious about it. And so I want to see, but I've been saying though, that in a game like this is going to really test us because we're going to need to be able to see if we can put up, uh, against teams like the Chiefs and the Ravens and the Seahawks, for example, who score a lot of points and who have really, really high-powered offenses. Um, so, you know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see when we when we play them tomorrow. Um, let's see. Real quick, uh, who else do we have? Tua Tagovailoa is also listed as questionable, although it's not a physical injury he's just got an illness he was listed as a limited participant in practice on friday uh, after missing two days um they said it's not covid related so that's good um and hopefully he's back quick uh let's see and then byron jones cornerback is listed as doubtful uh, with that groin slash ankle injury that he has. Also listed as doubtful was special teams captain Kayvon Frazier, also one of our safeties with a shoulder injury. So that is concerning as well. Um, you know, so obviously injuries have decimated uh, the entire NFL. So that's going to continue to be a major point of emphasis and something to keep an eye on for the Seahawks. Uh, their final injury report has safety Jamal Adams being ruled out of the game, which is huge, um, along with cornerback Quentin Dunbar and rookie first-round pick Jordan Brooks, uh, the linebacker from Texas Tech. I don't know how much he's been playing or if that's a big deal or not. Um, I, my guess is on a team like the Seahawks, probably not, but um, their defense... Uh, when we get into stats, you, you definitely can see that there is, um, you know, there's some room for improvement on their side. So especially having some of those defensive guys out, Quentin Dunbar and Jamal Adams, that is pretty huge. And we'll give our, you know, offense an opportunity, particularly in the pass game. But we'll have to see, that's, you know, if they can continue to protect and, you know, they also need to, they have been over the first three games, 
slowly improving the run game and this past one they got over 100 yards and they are now uh, over 100 yards on mm -hmm. average so they need to keep that up and be able to open up running lanes uh, as well um, and so we'll see um, let's see uh, they also listed running back uh, Chris Carson was listed as questionable, although he was a full participant in practice on Friday and is expected to play. And then they had five other players listed as questionable, including their starting guard, Damian Lewis. Uh, so that when they have a ton of people on their injury report, like just I mean, a bunch of these guys don't even have like designations at all, but they've got like four. Fuck, man, like 15 to 20 people on their injury report? Jesus Christ. That's intense. Um, you know, and we have a handful of people, too. We have safety Clayton Fedulum with a pectoral, Kavon Frazier with a shoulder, both safeties, uh, safety Brandon Jones with a back. So all of our safeties are banged up. You know, Xavier Howard's got a knee, Byron Jones, groin, and Achilles, Solomon Kinley with a foot, and Tua with his illness. Um, so, you know, obviously that's going to be something to keep an eye on. And that's also, uh, you know, going to play a role in this game, right? So with, um, with Quentin Dunbar and, uh, Jamal Adams being out, that is huge. I mean, you know, Jamal Adams is great in both the passing and, uh, the run game. So that could allow our offense to be, um, more productive than it would be with him there, right? Same thing with Quentin Dunbar. So we'll have to see how much of a factor that is and whether the Dolphins can capitalize on that. Obviously, it'll be massively important, too, to see if, you know, Solomon Kinley is going to play, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but, yeah, so, you know, look, let's go ahead and get into the, the stats now because there is going to be some opportunity for this team, but it is going to be a really, really, really tough challenge. Um, and, you know, the 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 stats and the 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 figures really kind of you know paint a, a solid picture but there is nuance to it and so you gotta you gotta make sure to take that into account and also um you know make sure you're not leaving out any relevant factors so let's get into it the dolphins are going to be playing the seahawks uh we are now one and two after our our, uh, our awesome win last week against the jags um you know again in that video, there was uh, there was almost nothing bad to say, right? They played a really good game of football, and they showed improvements, and the defense picked it up from their terrible performances in the first two games, uh, you know, and the offense continued to show, you know, consistency and improve. So that was great, but of course, there, just like any other game, there are factors that also surround that. They did have, uh, the Jags have had their fair uh, share of injuries, and they just didn't play well. I thought they were also victimized by some bad officiating. Um, you know, whatever. All of those are factors. But overall, the Dolphins played great. They really, really, really need to build on that. Again, it's going to be super tough. Right now, though, after that, the Dolphins did increase their average points per game from 19.5 to 23.3. Uh, to beat a team like the Seattle Seahawks, that is not going to be anywhere near good enough, though. They Because they're averaging 37 per game. We'll get to this in a minute, but Russell Wilson has set a record for most touchdowns in the first three games. Uh, uh, so, you know, it, it, and they're ranked second in the league for points per game right now. Second. Whereas, you know, we went from 26th to 22nd, which is good. But we're not going to be able to beat them with 23.3 uh, points per game on average, right? Even the amount of points that we, I think we won uh, against the Jags was, what, 31? They're averaging 37. Averaging 37. 31, obviously, wouldn't be enough to beat that either. So we're definitely going to need to pump and make sure that we can, you know, I mean, at least we're going to have to, like, you know, go toe-to-toe -to -toe and match them, right? So... You know, we'll see. Uh, like I said, when it comes to their defense, there will be some opportunities, but they're going to have to play well. Uh, let's see, yards per game. We did have a slight decrease there. We went from 339.5 to 324.3 and dropped from 22nd in the league to 26th. So obviously that's not good and not the direction that you want to go in. Um, you know, whereas the, the Seahawks are averaging 408 yards per game, which ironically enough is only good for ninth in the league. 
which is crazy because over 400 yards per game on average is a lot. But the Dallas Cowboys, for example, are averaging 490, almost 500 yards per game. That's insane. That's crazy. Um, but the Seahawks beat them uh, in a really, you know, uh, high scoring game. Uh, I'll, I'll actually mention the teams they played in a minute as further context. But um, but yeah, so again, not the direction we want to go in, uh, especially against a team like this. But, you know, we'll see if they can continue to improve. Passing yards per game also had a slight uh, decrease there. Uh, that's where the overall decrease comes from. We went from 246 and a half per game to 216.3, which it's not a lot in um, the yardage, but it dropped us from 17th to 25th overall in the league. So a pretty substantial drop there. And all of our uh, offensive statistics are in the 20 plus, uh, you know, range, 20 to 26. So we need to keep improving and we need to at least get into the teens of all of those stats. If we're going to want to, you know, I mean, if we're just going to want to even be able to say that the offense has shown improvement over the course of this season from where we've seen um, them be uh, from last year. And then let's see, but the, the Seahawks are averaging 289.7 passing yards per game, which is good for fifth. Rushing yards, we went from 93 to 108, which is great. So we love to see that. That needs to continue. They need to continue to average at least 100 yards on the ground to help take you know the pressure off of Ryan Fitzpatrick and the passing game, um, and you know to also negate some of the uh, the pass rush and stuff like that, right? So they definitely need to do that. But again, you know to be able to compete against teams. Uh, like the Seahawks and the Ravens and the Chiefs on a regular basis, you're going to need to, you know, the 49ers when they're totally healthy and, you know, so on and so forth, those teams and compete for, you know, the playoffs and, you know, the division and so on and so forth. You're going to want to get that more closer, at least closer to the 150 and, you know, passing yards, you're going to want to get to, you know, three to 400 in that range. Um, on average, right? On average. Anyway, but so that that is good enough to take us from 27th to 20th in the league. They are averaging 118.3 though, which is good for 16th in the league. Defensively, uh, points allowed. We did have some improvements here, which was nice to see. Um, like I said, the, the defense obviously did uh, pick their game up last week. But, you know, again, just not to downplay the, the performance of the Dolphins... Uh, defense because they absolutely absolutely picked it up but they also the Jags also did not play uh, particularly great and they've had some injuries they weren't uh, they didn't have DJ Chark so that was huge and then they had some injuries throughout the game and then you know they had some drops uh, which were their just their own mental mistakes and then you know there was the penalties and stuff like that too which I think overall was just um, you know they were it it was bad officiating uh for the most part there were some bad calls on us too so to be fair but uh you know when you take it into full context it it, it paints you know a, a different picture than when you just look at you know uh one or two stats or just stats and not you know include other important relevant information like injuries and so on and so forth anyway so we did improve though we went from 26 points per game down to 21.7 Again, I, you know, unfortunately, I think that number is probably likely to go up after this game because I'm not sure we're going to be able to keep the Seahawks from putting up at least 30 points. Um, and that's the thing is, is I think if we're going to beat them, we're going to have to at least we are going to have to score at least 30 points. We're averaging 23.3. It's not good enough. Um, anyway, but uh, down to 21.7, that puts us uh, up from 18th in the league to 10th. So that's great. We definitely want to see that improve. Uh, even though that's 10th in the league is pretty fucking great, we still want to uh, see that improve. You want to try and get that into the top five. And But also, too, you know, we haven't really played anybody to this point. I mean, the Bills are pretty high-powered, and they scored a lot of points. 
Um, but we haven't played any super high-powered offenses. That's why I said uh, it's going to be a really good test for the entire team this week against the Seahawks. Their defense kind of aside, right, because it's their offense that's going to be the biggest problem. I expect them to score 30-plus points, a lot of points. Uh, so can the offense keep up, and can our defense, you know, stop them from doing that, right? Uh, so it's going to be a big test on us because uh, – but they are giving up 28.7 points per game, which is 19th in the league. Now, real quick, because I do want to mention, as other context, they played the Falcons, the Patriots, and the Cowboys. Now, the the I'm not totally sure how the Falcons are doing. I think they might be struggling a bit because I know they've had some big injuries, including Julio Jones. Uh, but, you know... The Patriots, especially with Cam Newton, I mean, they scored 30 points in that game. The Cowboys scored 31, and they're lost to the Seahawks, right? So those, but the Falcons scored 25, right? But the Cowboys and the Patriots, for sure, are two teams that you expect to get a lot of yards and score points on you. So um, it's you know it's relevant contextual information for uh, to help explain why that's there, right? Now again, though. That's good uh, just on its face at the very least because it shows that there at least could be some kind of opportunity. The Dolphins just have to execute and take advantage of that. Uh, yards allowed, we did have a decrease from 440.5 after two games to 399.3 after three games. Still not anywhere near good enough. I mean, that's still basically 400 yards per game. Um you know, and they are averaging 408 yards per game. So definitely need to see some improvement there, especially against a team like this. But that does improve us from 30th to 25th overall. They're giving up 399.5, which is 23rd in the league. Again, again, though, you do have to take into consideration the teams that they played. So, you know, the, the Patriots, again, and the, the Cowboys are expected to put up a lot of yards and points. They're averaging the Cowboys 490 yards per game. So it's massively important context. Um, yeah, anyway, and then let's see. Pass yards allowed. Uh, we went from 276.5 down to 265.7. So a slight decrease there. Obviously the direction that you want to go in. Um, and, but that leaves us at 26th in the league. We didn't have any change in in league standing we stay at 26 so obviously you still it, it's the right direction but you still need to improve uh and then they are giving up 430.7 passing yards uh per game which is 32nd in the league but again it is a massively important footnote to add in the teams that they've played and like the cowboys for example averaging in their first three games 490 yards per game i mean that's insane Right? And the, the, the Patriots, for example, which is relevant to this next stat, um, is uh, you know the leading rusher in the league right now. The Patriots have the most rush yards in the league, but the Seattle Seahawks are only giving up 66.7, which is good for second in the league. So their pass yards, uh, you know, they're giving up, they're 32nd in the league in passing, but... They're second in the league in rushing. My guess is is that both of those uh, stats, once you get to you know the back end of the season, will likely even out a bit. Um, it will be interesting to see you know if their defense you know just kind of like picks it up and gets them kind of both both of those numbers into the top ten, top fifteen. Um, or if, you know, they're going to continue to give up a lot of yards through the air. And, of course, you know, not having Jamal Adams and Quentin Dunbar could, you know, lend to that. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Obviously, though, I'm not following every game that the Seahawks play, so it's not like I will be. But anyway, so they're second in the league for uh, rush yards allowed. We, on the other hand, went from 164 to 133.7 per game. So an improvement in definitely the direction that you want to go, which is uh, brings us up from 29th to 25th. But again, still not anywhere close to where we need to be. Um, and that needs to improve quite a bit. Now, as far as uh, game to game comparison, 
We had 294 total yards. They had 412 in our previous games. We had 156 passing. They had 295. So they obviously beat us out in total yards and passing yards. We did beat them out in rushing, though, with 138 to their 117. So that's good. And again, that's something that we are definitely going to need to be able to maintain and improve on. We had 5.2 yards uh, per play, which I believe was slightly down from last game from 5.7, the previous game to that. Uh, and But they are uh, they did 5.9 per play in their game against the uh, Cowboys. Uh, they lost a fumble. We did not. And no, no team, neither of the teams threw an interception, neither the Dolphins or the Seahawks. We were 53% uh, third downs, which is great. And obviously an improvement in the direction we want to head in there. So again, the offense has been slightly improving each of the first three weeks. I hope that they can maintain that in this game. They're going to have to and continue to improve if they're going to have any chance of beating this team. Uh, but 53% is absolutely... You still want to get a little bit better than that, ideally. Uh, but over 50% is great. Conversely, they were 38%. Which is interesting considering they scored 38 points, put up all of those yards. Russell Wilson threw for five touchdowns and, you know, they won the game and they're 3-0. and uh, Whereas, you know, the Dolphins are 1-2. and So, you know, that is interesting and just goes to show you that you don't necessarily have to have, you know, uh, an outstanding third down conversion rate or really any one stat, right? It's You have to take it all into account because that's how you get the full picture. Uh, but anyway, so we had the ball for 34-22 to their 32-34. So both teams had the ball overall for the most amount of time. We had six penalties. They had five. In the passing game, Ryan Fitzpatrick was 18 for 20, 90% completion percentage, 160 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions, and a 133.3 passer rating. Now look, obviously, again, if we're gonna want to, if we're gonna want a. Um, to be able to compete against teams like the Seahawks and Ravens, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, he's got to have that kind of completion percentage and that kind of passer rating. But he needs to have, he definitely needs to have more attempts and um, not necessarily, well, for completion percentage, ideally you want to be like over 70, 60s, and the 60s is solid, is okay, but you want to try and be in the 70s. Um, ideally or higher right you're not going to get 90 percent every game that's unrealistic but so you know you want to have 70 percent or, or better completion percentage uh with you know that kind of passer rating but he does need more touchdowns in a single game and more yardage while also maintaining a strong run game right because otherwise you're not going to be able to compete with the or, and keep up with the kind of high powered offense that you're going to see from the seattle seahawks or the um, Chiefs, or the Ravens, or the Niners when they're fully healthy, etc., right? Uh, but on the season, he's 71.1% completion percentage. Great. 679 yards, four touchdowns, three interceptions. Obviously, that ratio needs to be a lot better. But he is 91.4 passer rating on the season, which is solid, which is really good. Uh, so far. So let's see if he can continue that. And, you know, I mean, if he can put up three or four touchdowns and no interceptions, and then we get a, a touchdown or two on the ground, I'm not sure we can manage that. But if we get, I mean, Jesus Christ, that's four to six, inter, that's four to six touchdowns there. I'm not sure if we're, if we're ready for that kind of level, but I hope so. And I want to see them do it, but they're going to need to, if they want to win this game, Russell Wilson was 27 for 40. Uh, out of 40 for 67 and a half uh, completion percentage, 315 yards, five touchdowns, no interceptions, and a 130.7 passer rating. And interestingly enough, that's his lowest passer rating through the first three games of the season. 130.7, right? Because then on the season, he's 76.7% completion percentage, 925 yards, 14 touchdowns to one interception, and a 139 passer rating. Our defense is going to have their hands full. And that's just looking at Russell Wilson and not even the rest of their playmakers on offense. So we'll get into that. Miles Gaskin led the way for us, 22 for 66 yards and three average. Ryan Fitzpatrick threw in seven rushes, 38 yards, a touchdown and a 5-4. Jakeem Grant had one rush for 29 yards. Jordan Howard had three rushes, one yard, one touchdown and a .3 average. Chris Carson, who is expected to play? 
uh, had 14 rushes, 64 yards, and a 4.6 average. Russell Wilson threw in 6 for 22 and a 3.7. Travis Homer, 2 for 19 and a 9.5. Carlos Hyde threw in 4 rushes, 12 yards, and a 3 average. And the receiving... So, I mean, they got... You know, Russell Wilson obviously is... Uh, can make an impact with his feet. So that's a concern. Chris Carson is a good running back uh, and has been doing good things for them and a playmaker. Carlos Hyde, we know what he is. He, uh, and he's been a stalwart in this league, a lot like Frank Gore. So he's always a factor. And this Travis Homer guy, I don't really know him, but he had some solid stats and a damn good average and 9.5 in their past game. So their running backs are definitely, including Russell Wilson, are going to be uh, a handful. And then uh, receiving, well, for us, Devontae Parker led the way, 5 of 5, 69 yards. No touchdowns, though. Uh, and for him, look, he has to be dominant, man. We can't, like, I mean, if he has a game like that, stat-wise, every once in a while, okay. But he needs to be getting touchdowns, like, every game, at least one. He needs to be pushing, you know, a 100-yard average, or at least, you know, I mean, yeah. Like, he needs to be pushing a 100-yard average per game, right um and more completions and more targets he needs to be dominant and he hasn't been that yet uh even though the offense has been playing pretty well he is dealing with a hamstring injury so that is you know obviously a factor but he needs to get healthy and he needs to be dominant if this team is going to win against the seahawks and uh you know whatever mm -hmm. right and continue to improve etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, anyway, Miles Gaskin was 5 of 5 for 29. Jakeem Grant, 1 of 1 for 19. Mike Kosicki, 1 of 3, 15 yards and a touchdown. Again, I mean, especially when you look at his stat line from last week, it's a major drop off in, you know, completions and targets and yards. Uh, I think the touchdowns was the same. I think it was one this game, one last game, or one in the past two games. But he had 130 yards, right? Down to 15. Again, he needs to be a lot more dominant as well. Isaiah Ford was 2 of 2 for 14. Preston Williams, 2 of 2, 7, and a touchdown. DJ Metcalf, on the other hand, was 4 of 8 for 110 yards and a touchdown. Tyler Lockett, 9 of 13 for 100 yards and 3 touchdowns. I mean, dude, like, all of our safeties are hurt. Byron Jones isn't going to play. Uh, Xavier Howard's, you know, nursing a knee thing. Our safeties, I mean, our secondary is going, our defense as a whole is going to have their hands full. Uh, Greg Olson threw in 5 of 6 for 61. Freddie Swain, 1 of 113. Chris Carson, 3 of 3 for 12. Carlos Hyde, 1 for 1 and 11 yards. Jacob Hollister, 1 of 2, 1 yard and a touchdown. Uh, yeah, and that's how that ends. Um, so, you know, like I said, man, they got weapons all over the place. Russell Wilson is an amazing quarterback. He's really good at coming back from behind and getting a dub, um, right? Fourth quarter and shit like that. So this is going to be a huge, huge test. There is potential, like out of all of the games that we've played so far, this one has the most potential to be a blowout, not in the Dolphins' favor. So, in other words, this one has the greatest potential to this point uh, to be, you know, a very, very one-sided game in favor of the opposing team. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. Hopefully um, the entire team can really build off of their performance last week. But it is going to be super tough to do so against this kind of uh, offense. Uh, and their defense, I mean, honestly, statistically didn't play bad at all. Um, they just have, you know, they just played the fucking Dallas Cowboys who are averaging 490 fucking yards per game and, you know, scored over 30 points themselves. So, but defensively, the Dolphins had a damn good game too. Four sacks, three tackles for loss, one forced fumble, one fumble recovery, one interception, and three passes defensed. They have to have games like that. That's how they need to play all the time, especially against this team. I'm not sure that that stat line is going to hold, I hope it does. I don't think it's going to, unfortunately. Um, I do think that this is going to be a more one-sided game. Anyway, the Seahawks, real quick, had two sacks, six tackles for loss, one forced fumble, one fumble recovery, two interceptions, and nine passes defensed. So, again, there's going to be some opportunity for this team, but they have to play a phenomenal game. They have to play really clean football. They have to execute really well. And, um, 
you know, cut down on the mistakes, et cetera, et cetera. And they're gonna have to score a lot of points. And the defense, man, they're gonna have to they're gonna have to show up in a big way as well. Uh, so, but I mean, like I said, I don't think we're gonna be able to stop them from, um, you know, scoring over thirty points. When you take into consideration how they've done, the players that they have on their team how this defense has performed, even with their really good improved performance from last week. I just don't think that they're going to be able to stop it. So I'm, you know, I'm thinking it'll probably be, man, let's say 35, 24, 35, 24. I, I think, you know, I think the Dolphins, at least through the first half of the game, will you know the offense will um show that life and show the 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 good things that we've seen but i think they're going to get worn out because i'm not sure the defense you know going into the second half because i'm not sure the defense is going to be able to keep up and ultimately i think that they're going to run away with it um i think that going into the half they'll probably have a, a decent lead nothing like insurmountable but then in the second half, they will, you know, seal the deal and probably, you know, maintain a lead throughout the entirety. So let's say, you know, 35-24 uh, Seattle Seahawks victory. Um, hopefully I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. But again, there's a lot that has to go into that. And the Dolphins have to play their best game, unquestionably their best game of the season. And, and need to improve across the board from where they were last week. Even as good as some of that stuff was. Even the third down conversion rate at 53%. It all has to be absolutely a lot better if they're going to beat this kind of team. Uh, Alright guys, well that's how I'm going to wrap this up. That is, uh, you know, my preview game for the Miami Dolphins versus Seattle Seahawks game tomorrow at uh, uh, Hard Rock Stadium. It is 10 a.m. for me. That means it's going to be 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, I will be doing a live stream for that game. So join me for that. It should be fun and interesting, you know, regardless of the outcome. Unless, I suppose, it's just an absolute shutout, blowout kind of thing. Uh, but I don't expect that to be the case. I think they'll win, you know, pretty handedly. But I just don't think, I don't think it's going to be... Uh, that big of a blowout or, or or even considered a blowout um I, you know i think that they'll keep themselves in it for a while and you know they'll make it interesting but we'll probably ultimately lose by a solid margin um anyway so like i said i'm gonna get out of here i hope you guys uh you know enjoy and appreciate my perspectives if you do make sure you hit the subscribe button make sure you hit the like button make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts share my channel and videos with your friends and family leave your questions comments and concerns down in the comment section and of course as always make sure you follow me on twitter at dylan tartaro and with that i'm out i'll see y'all soon fins up